You are listening to Infertility Bites. Infertility Bites, but it bites a bit less when you're not alone. My name is Casey, and I'm blessed to be joined by my co-captain in this journey, my lovely wife, Sarah. Hello. On this series, we're going to talk about our experiences dealing with infertility. It is important, however, to note that we are not doctors or even experts, just people that understand how difficult it can be. Each person's journey is unique, like a fingerprint, so it's best to leave the medicine to the professionals. Um, I want to start off first by apologizing for the gap here. It's been yeah. a while since we recorded a podcast. Um, we've been dealing with a just uh, spree of illnesses in uh, the family. <laughs> it, nothing serious, just like sinus infection followed by someone else having a sinus infection followed by the first person having a new sinus infection and then me getting my second shot and getting ill from that yes so uh because of all that we just haven't been able to quite put together an episode in a while uh the last episode we did release was all about how covid has changed infertility treatments during the time how it's affected uh people with their ability to be with their loved ones going through it. So uh, if you haven't listened to that, go ahead and go back and listen to that one when you get a chance. Uh, This one, we're going to kind of uh, keep it a little more simple on it. We're actually going to talk about celebrities who have had to deal with infertility. Uh, Some that you may have heard of and some that you may not have heard of. Um, I think it's important for us to keep in mind that we're not alone. In infertility. Yeah. And it's really easy to feel like we're the only people going through it. Even when you're listening to a podcast about other people going through infertility, it's still easy to feel like it's something that you go through by yourself. And it's important to note that we've talked before about how many people tend to go through it. But those are like abstract numbers. So let's talk about people that you know, that you see on your TV or on your Instagram feeds or, you know, in movies, um, on magazine covers. People, real people that we know in the world that have at least been open about their IVF or their infertility. Which they're probably like us and they realize that they didn't have anyone to talk to them about it, so... And they are able to, with their platform, to bring it up and talk about it, which is this is good. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm I'm getting a lot of these from magazines and and articles out there. So I, I'm not breaking any ground with any of yeah. these. These are all people that you can find in one form or another. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's important to remind yourself that a lot of people go through it, including celebrities, including very famous people. The only advantage that they have is they have the funds to do it in ways that the average person doesn't. But probably one of the most prominent infertility spokespeople out there right now has been Chrissy Teigen. Uh, She's been very, very open about their struggles with uh, infertility and eventually... Wanting wanting a really big family. Mm -hmm. Because I think they were... Uh, they've been married for at least eight years, I think. They were always wanting kids, so yeah. And it just wasn't happening. Yeah, and they've been very open about it. And they fortunately now have two, I yes. believe. Um, and uh, so congratulations to them on that. Uh, so they are a success story. But they're also, you know, they're just like us in the fact that they... They were trying to have kids for like eight years before they finally, finally got the IVF and were able to get pregnant. First, they had their daughter Luna and then uh, later a son. I think they named Miles. So, yeah. Um. So that's a very, very big name. And someone that uh, all of us have seen, whether you watch uh, Lip Sync Battle or... Or whether you used to um, follow the supermodels, you know, uh, she's out there and and you've seen her. Um, uh, local to Nebraska, uh, a, a Nebraska um, success story, Gabrielle Union 
uh, has talked about her troubles getting pregnant with her husband, Dwayne Wade, uh, mentioned eight or nine miscarriages. Yeah, uh, that that just, I mean, that breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, in, in her book, she wrote about it and she said, for three years, my body has been a prisoner of trying to get pregnant. I've either been about to go into an IVF cycle, in the middle of an IVF cycle, or coming out of an IVF cycle. Uh, and she talks a lot about that in her book, We're Going to Need More Wine, so you can read about it there. But it's just one of those things, we've talked on our show about how important it is to be open about it, and how important it is to, to get it off your chest and not hide it anymore. And, and she's one of the examples of someone who finally was like, let's get it out there. And let's talk about it so people know what we're going through. This isn't something to just hide, right? Um, Nicole Kidman very famously had uh, struggles when she was with her now ex-husband, Tom Cruise. Um, Fortunately, since then, in her second marriage, third marriage? I I don't don't know, to be honest. Anyways, in her current marriage <laughs> urban uh they were able to conceive one and then they had a surrogate for uh their second so they've got their two kids through that um we've heard about kim kardashian west and what they've had to go through including uh ivf um surrogacy treatments and then eventually surrogacy uh for theirs um, I really hadn't heard uh, about Jimmy Fallon and his wife yeah. um, going through it. And so that was a news for me. But um, on one of their episodes of uh, During COVID, their at-home edition of The Tonight Show, uh, him and his wife opened up about their journey with IVF for five years. Um, and I will say just you listing off the people here. It does kind of go in the stereotype that, I mean, I guess um, Nicole Kidman, when she was married to Tom Cruise, we don't really know if they were, well, they might have. So she was quite young, but most of these people, when they started to wanting kids, uh, they're what we, what I was always thinking of when it was people that were trying to conceive. They were in their early 40s or, but, you know. Sorry, that's just something I'm just noticing on this list, but I guess I don't want people to think that because it's like. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the deal. Is it's it's easy for you to get a skewed idea of infertility um, based on when people come out about it or when people yeah. talk about it. You know, a lot of people, when they're actually going through it, they don't talk about it. And that's why we're I'm such a fan of talking about it when you're going through it. So people understand that it's not just something that affects people who waited until later to do it. It does affect them, and sometimes at a higher rate, if only because of the way nature works on things. But but many of them didn't come out about their struggles until they were 40, but they'd been trying for eight years. So it was yeah. 32 when they first started trying. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's important to note... Uh, you know, Chrissy Teigen, though, however, was... Oh, yeah. No, was, she's she's younger than me, I yeah, think, so... Plenty young, so... Um, uh, Chrissy Brinkley actually uh, opened up about it in 1998, so... This isn't a new thing. Never has been. But uh, it's important to note that some people were talking about it quite a while ago. Even if you didn't hear about it, they talked about it. Um, Aisha Taylor, one of, uh, yeah. Actresses that I'm very fond of. I liked her when she was in CSI, um, Criminal Minds. Criminal I mean, Minds. Yeah. You know, she's been in a lot of things that I really liked and she talked about it. Yeah. Um, I had known she was ever struggling. I mean. Well, and in the end, she unfortunately is, is, uh, not a success story. Even with her means and, and ability, they uh, they eventually just had to, to say that it isn't going to happen for them. And they'd gone through all the shots and 
all of this stuff and eventually just decided uh, that it wasn't going to happen. So, And I got to be honest, sharing just that has, has got to be good because, well, I mean, I just think if our IVF hadn't worked and then let's just say whatever, however way we found money to do some other way or adoption and it didn't work. I mean, you have to hear those stories where people where they just said, maybe it just wasn't for us. And they still found meaning and love within life. And they got to share that love with other people. I'm not saying it's easy for her by any means. But like we've always said, this is such a taxing thing. I mean, it just does so much to you mentally that at some point you have to kind of say, okay, I need to take care of myself. So... I do think it's important to hear those stories too. So mm-hmm. I, that's sweet. Um, Emma Thompson uh, s- suffered a miscarriage in 97. Two years later through IVF was able to give birth to her daughter Gaia. Um, and since then it didn't work and it didn't work and no matter what they tried. And so um, even one success was not followed up by future successes. Uh, but Emma Thompson is, is she's a legendary actress. So it's important to know, like I say, it happens to people. Um, I, I think most of us had heard of Courtney Cox, their problems uh, with David Arquette um, uh, and their daughter Coco, who was an IVF baby in 2004. Um, Tyra Banks, another supermodel. Um, she kind of talked about, I think, what Sarah was getting on to. You know, she said when she was 23, she'd tell herself, in three years, I'm going to start having kids. And then when she was 24, it was in three years, I'm going to start having kids. And every kept year, she kept saying that until finally she's like, okay, now I want to, and found out that it wasn't so easy. And those are the times where your brain can start to beat you, beat yourself up. Yeah. You know, I should have started last year. I should have started two years ago. It's, it's, uh, it's my fault for waiting so long. And you have to understand, you have to keep in mind that it's not necessarily that you waited. It could have been there the entire time. Yeah. You know, Sarah and I had to deal with that ourselves because that is in the back of our minds. You know, we got married and we waited about three years because we wanted to enjoy being married and and, and yeah. all of that stuff. And when we decided to start trying, it just didn't come and didn't come and didn't come. And in the back of our brain, well, you waited too long. You know, well, Then we get the tests and all the stuff. We find out about Sarah's underlying PCOS. We find out about my uh, situation. And we have to realize that those things probably didn't change in that three years. Yeah, no. (laughs) Those things both existed when we first got married. And so the only thing starting to try when we first got married would have likely done is, is have three more years of infertility before we got going. Yeah. Um, because there was a financial thing. We couldn't start the treatments until we reached a certain place financially. So even if we'd have just started trying right off the bat, we still wouldn't have been able to have started the treatments until about the same time. So um, she, uh, Tyra Banks eventually did have a son by a surrogate. Uh, so congratulations there. Uh Brooke Shields famously uh, did IVF at 36 years old, starting there. Um, One that I really think we need to focus on a bit. Former First Lady Michelle Obama. Yeah, I had no idea. I did not know this until I started researching this, but both Malia and Sasha are IVF babies. Um, And that's something that... She was first lady for for eight years, and I don't remember ever hearing about that. Um, so it can happen to anyone. And, you know, of course, this was all before she was first lady, but it's one of those things that she talks about it now. 
but I kind of wish she would have talked about it more during the time. Um, because I think it would have opened up some people's eyes a little bit more. Uh, a name comes across the list that is actually one of the ones that, in a weird way, Sarah and I can kind of point to and and say that's when we started to take our own struggles a little bit more serious. Yeah. I used um, to be obsessed with Inus. Mm-hmm. I mean, poor Casey. Yeah. When he started quoting it, I knew I was watching it too often. Yeah. So, uh, Juliana Rancic, um, who's one of the hosts of Inus for a very long time. Uh, she had a sideshow, mm-hmm. and that's really where it started was... But yeah, she started talking about it on her show uh, and eventually started documenting the path through all of their um, struggles. struggles. And... Uh, the biggest thing was she had breast cancer and her treatment for breast cancer um, meant they ended up having to use a surrogate to have their child. Um, so, you know, she tried IVF. And had miscarriages. And then eventually she ended up having to do uh, the surrogacy. Um, But she then was able to talk about something that some of us might have to do. Sarah and I didn't have to do this. um, And so we don't know the struggles of this. But surrogacy, uh, you talk to anyone who's had to go through it. And there's a certain part of it that you have to work through where you're... Your brain, trying to figure out the best way to word it, your brain is angry that you're not the one carrying your own baby. And you have to try to work through it. Yeah. It's something that I can't speak of because I wasn't in the situation. Sarah wasn't in the situation. She was able to speak of it on the show about all the things that she had to to go through with her own mind while her surrogate was carrying their child. Well, I mean, it's just what we were talking about before we started. I said, if you're a woman and you want to have a baby, you want to, I mean, you want to feel the sensation of your baby inside you. You want to feel it press against your stomach or your bladder or whatever. It's just one of the things that you look forward to. I mean, there's a lot of negatives and the fact like morning sickness and stuff, but it's all worth it for that little bit, so... Uh, recently, one that's been a little bit in the news has been Amy Schumer. Uh, they had one baby through IVF, and they're in the process of trying to get a sibling. Um, and she's been very open about it. If if you want someone to follow on Instagram and talk about it, she do- talks about it regularly on her Instagram. So you can follow along there. You can give her support share your stories with her i'm i can't guarantee she'd respond but she's been fairly responsive to other people that i've seen so um an example of kind of what we were talking about before hugh jackman and his wife deborah lee furness i believe is how it's pronounced um when they got married hugh jackman was 27 and she was 40 and you know, immediately knew that if they were going to have kids together, they had to start right away. They had uh, miscarriages through in vitro. Um, and then eventually they came to terms with that they were just going to adopt. And so they did. They adopted a daughter and a son. Oh. So. Um, Angela Bassett talked about her infertility treatments over seven years um and they eventually had twins through surrogacy Mm -hmm. uh kate walsh um talked about it on on uh maria menudos's xm series xm show uh maria menudos also yeah uh struggled with infertility so they kind of bonded about about their struggles there and talked about it. Uh, Jordana Brewster had to deal with it. Elizabeth Banks. I was actually talking to Sarah before we started recording about this. Um, I'm, 
I'm a, I don't know if they've got a term for it, but I'm a huge fan of the TV show Scrubs. I have watched it from beginning to end, all eight seasons, because the ninth season doesn't exist. <laughs> don't talk to me about it. Uh, all eight seasons from beginning to end, probably about seven or eight times. Um, and she guest starred in uh, quite a few episodes in season six and seven. And her storyline in the show was uh, she was a doctor that met the main character, Zach Braff's character, J.D., and they hit it off and they went on one date uh, and she got pregnant. There's a whole story on it. It was even more than just she got pregnant but their first time having sex. It was she got pregnant their first time. Uh, being naked with each other, and uh, they didn't even get to the sex part. Um, and I mentioned how when this was recording was also during the times that she would have been struggling yeah, with infertility and how difficult it must have been for her to play this character that got pregnant so easy while in real life she's having so much tr- troubles doing it. Um, they eventually had uh, two children through surrogacy as well. Um, and so they talked uh, talk about it and they're open about it. But it's one of those things that it just kind of hit me when I was reading about it. I was like, yeah, that must have been really, really hard for her. Uh Baby Spice, Emma Bunton. Yeah, you gotta say Baby Spice, because I don't think I would know her real name. <laughs> uh, Winton, she had endometriosis in her 20s, and uh, that later on caused her a lot of struggles. Uh, she um, has been able to have kids, two children with her husband, but it did not come easy. Uh, guitarist for... Formerly Dixie Chicks, now just the Chicks. I mean, Emily Robinson uh, struggled with it. Went through IVF in 2006. Anne Hathaway. Yeah, I didn't. We were talking about this. I'd never heard. I mean, I know she has two kids, so. And she's relatively young, so I didn't think, like, hmm. Yeah. Uh, in an interview with the Associated Press, she says that uh, part of the problems that she saw in the world is that we have a very one-size-fits-all approach to getting pregnant. Uh, you get pregnant, and for the more majority of cases, there's a really happy time. But uh, to a lot of people who are trying to get pregnant, that's not really their story. Or that's just one part of their story. And the steps that lead up to that part of the story are really painful and very isolating and full of self-doubt, and I went through that. I wonder if she was going through it when she filmed the movie One Day, which was about a couple that wants to have a baby and they never get around to having one together. Kind of a very sad movie, people. So, uh, newscaster Savannah Guthrie had to go through it. Um, she talked about their IVF for their second child. Um, and that's just recently there. Uh, Tia Mowry Hardick, Hardrick. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, formerly from Sister Sister. Oh, yeah. Uh, She was diagnosed with endometriosis at 27 and uh, was told that she would have, would likely not be able to conceive. She went through two surgeries, major diet change, and was able to give birth to a baby boy in 2011. Um, But they struggled for another seven years before they gave birth to another kid in 2018. Um, So... Um, there's, I mean, so many ones out there. Juliana Huff struggled with it. Jesse J. And I mean, I mean, some of these, I think, um, that we're mentioning off here, they just, they've either talked about either wanting kids and it's just been hard or they've been told by doctors. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause you know, that's another situation. A doctor can just flat out say there's going to be very big difficulties for you ever to conceive a kid naturally so 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 
I just wanted to bring up, I mean, that's, that's a, a bunch of them that I came across. Um, and there's more and, uh, you can find all sorts of lists about it. Um, and some that go into a little bit more about how they, uh, dealt with it, all of that stuff. Um, if you're wanting to not feel so alone, take some time, look at some of these other people who've gone through these celebrities. They're just like us. And so that's really what I wanted to talk about there. I know it's kind of a light fluff episode um, with the illnesses. We just didn't have as much time to plan the other stuff that we wanted to talk about. But, but I mean, you definitely could look up these uh, ladies on, like Casey was saying, their Instagram. Or maybe they have a podcast about something this or something that you could follow. Just, I mean, sometimes it is nice just to hear other stories. So, I mean, we get it. These are very famous people that money for the most part is not uh an issue for them but it's just also it's nice to know that it you aren't alone and there are some famous people that have had the same struggles as you so yes um but that'll bring us to the end of this show today um like i say if you haven't listened to all our other episodes go back and listen to the past episodes um but we Thank you for listening. Make sure to follow us on social media. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. We've got a Facebook page. We're on uh, Twitter at Infertility Podcast. Infertility Pod? At Infertility Pod. <laughs> Get so confused sometimes. Um, at Infertility Pod on Twitter. Um, Infertility Bites Podcast at gmail.com if you want to send us a message there. Uh, like I said, Facebook. Um, the show really only works when we get listeners submitting their stories. Um, we started off and we had a really good run with some uh, submitted stories. The well kind of dried up and we really would love to talk about other stories there. We are working on getting set up in a way that we can actually do video calls with people and actually talk face to face. We still don't have that quite set up yet. So if you would like to share your story, there is going to be a link in the show notes it's um on our flow page it's on our uh facebook it's on our twitter profile all over the place uh for a form that you can fill out and tell us the information tell us what your story is going on because we would love to share that for the world we can keep it anonymous if you're not ready for your names to be out there yeah we can uh, help publicize things like etsy stores or or gofundmes to help you get your your little baby. Uh, so if if you're willing to submit your story, get in contact with us and fill out the form. We'd love to help you out that way, right? Um, if you are enjoying the show, a review on whatever platform you listen to it will be great. Uh, it really helps the algorithms to make sure other people find out about the show. If you're comfortable sharing this on your social media, just share this episode or, or the page for the whole podcast on your social media uh, so other people can find out about it. That would all be very appreciated. But for now, I think we're going to wrap things up. May your dreams of tiny feet be answered soon. Thanks for listening. And as always, we're going to let our little scientific miracle send us off with love and kisses. Bye. I love you. Hello. Hello. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.